I know board gamers and welcome back to Not Board Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the solo experience of this game right here. And that's right, I've got two boxes for this. But this is the main box here, this is the core box. And of course, I'm talking about Marvel Zombies from Simon. Now, <laughs> it's a zombie side game and that is gonna fill people with absolute joy or derision. And I think that is a real key component of zombie and, uh, uh, Marvel Zombies and Zombie Side games. Is that Zombie Side uh, and uh, the the kind of very notion of Zombie Side carries quite a few negative connotations with it. You see, it's a relatively old school type of game. Uh, you've got old school mechanisms in there. It's a dice chucking game. It's reliant on a hell of a lot of luck in terms of what you roll on your dice, and of course, you're battling against. Uh, a potentially overused trope here. I'm going to say battling against. You're working with, should I say, a potentially overused trope here. And that is, of course, zombies. Now, zombie games have been done. They are a dime a dozen. So, should you have another zombie game in your collection? Well, you know, that's going to be the focus on the video. It's, it's not going to be a straightforward review. And I'll, I'll explain why in a second or not. Because... I think that anybody that's been into board games for any amount of time now knows a little bit about Zombie Side, what it is and how it plays. You have your sectional maps, which you lay out in terms of a scenario, and you're going to play uh, a group of heroes against hordes of whatever. Now, in Zombies, in Marvel Zombies, the heroes, uh, the, the in the core game, should I say, the roles are reversed. You're going to play zombies against hordes of kind of uh, uh, troopers and specialists and superheroes, etc. But of course, in normal Zombie Side, it is you, the heroes, against hordes of zombies. So it carries the same kind of um, uh, kind of uh, mechanisms and, and, and footprint and DNA as all of the zombie side games. But of course, what they've done is they've incorporated the Marvel IP into there as well. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I couldn't give two hoots about Marvel IP. I'm so over superheroes right now. I think as a movie genre, it's been done to death. And as a board game genre, there are lots of different games out there as well that kind of cover various superhero type games. And then when you throw zombies in there, you've got this whole melange of stuff, which is just like, you know, so far against what a lot of people are looking for in their games. You know, superhero movies, let's just, I'm just a little brief moment on superhero movies. My issue with superhero movies now is that, you know, <laughs> they're all so fantastical and full of quantum realm kind of worlds, etc. None of them seem to really focus on Earth. And what superhero comics from me growing up in the 70s were all about, which is kind of, you know, locking in on what happens on Earth and, and to everyday people and saving them from bad guys or whatever. But now it all takes place in a quantum realm. And I'm so kind of over these over stylized superhero, certainly from the Marvel perspective uh, and the DC perspective as well, uh, kind of uh, way of, of looking at them. So that is kind of a done deal in terms of what interests people. Zombies, very much a done deal in terms of what interests people. When I mentioned this to some of my friends, I got Marvel Zombies. One of the first rep replies from a couple of them were, Ugh, zombies. And I get that because zombies are done. You know, you look at some zombie games that are out there. You've got games like Dawn of the Zeds, third edition, which is a fantastic game. Um, uh, the Plum Island Horror, or Plum Island Horror, there's no V at the beginning of it, which again is kind of about zombies and mutations, etc. There are loads and loads of, and of course, Zombie Side itself. There are loads and loads of zombie games out there. So this had everything kind of going against uh, what I was looking for in a game. The only saving grace is I have guilty pleasure games. My guilty pleasure games are games where I get to chuck a lot of dice and I'm kind of putting the, 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 the fate of my success mainly in how I roll these little six-sided cubes. So I enjoy games like uh, Fortune and Glory, which is, again, a pure kind of B-movie of a game, which knows it's a B-movie of a game, kind of Indiana Jones in board game form, which is heavily reliant on rolling dice and flipping cards and finding out what happens. So that was the only saving grace I had when I thought about I wanted to get Marvel Zombies. So I went out and I bought the core set. And in the core set of Marvel Zombies, you've got, I think you have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, you have six uh, Marvel superheroes who've been turned into zombies. You have Wasp, Hulk, Deadpool, Captain America, Iron Man, and Captain Marvel. All of those have been turned into zombies. And the aim of the game is to kind of work through a number of missions as zombies, kind of, 
killing the, the good guys, as you would know them, uh, the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, uh, and, and the bystanders, etc., and devouring them, and eating them, and trying to get to the end of the missions. And you're going to come up against actual superheroes in the game as your foes as well. So again, in the base game, we've got Spider-Man, Black Panther, uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Miss Marvel, Thor, and the Scarlet Witch as well. So you're going to come up against these um, these superheroes in the game. And, you know, they're going to have additional powers and additional things to do in there. But mainly, it's a number of scenarios that you're going to play through um, uh, using the actions that you've got, and rolling the dice, and using the trait cards that you've got to try and get through to the end of the mission. So, as I say, I, you know, it kind of, I know it's around, I don't back Simon stuff on Kickstarter, I'm no way I'm paying kind of five, six hundred pounds for loads and loads of boxes, etc. But I did think, it'd been kind of niggling at me over the last few weeks, that I actually fancied Marvel Zombies. I'd read some of the reviews and looked at some of the videos online, I thought, you know what, for the kind of beer and pretzels night that I sometimes enjoy having, then maybe it's a game I want to give a go. So I did, I went out and I bought Marvel Zombies. Uh, and, you know, you get the game, and the game is zombie side, and it's a Simon game, so of course you've got a ton of plastic miniatures in there. How many have you got? Well, it comes in a separate box, okay? All the miniatures and the player boards come in a separate box, and you can see on the back of the box there just how many miniatures you get. You've got your various zombies and your superheroes and your um, your bystanders, then you've got all of the, uh, or kind of all of the hordes that you're going to be battling against. So you've got troopers, you've got specialists, and you've got guards as well so there's like loads and loads of plastic miniatures uh, that come with the game that's a, a, kind of another thing I've got enough plastic miniatures that if I started painting now and I painted one a day I'd probably be 10 years down the line before I painted all of my plastic miniatures and of course you get these uh, the, the zombies eye zombies eye zombie side uh, plastic trays which are great I must admit uh, to kind of put your character cards on that you're going to play with and play the game so yeah I went out and I bought, bought Marvel Zombies, and I set it up on my first go, and I thought, right, you know, I'm going to give it a fair crack. I know I've got preconceived notions and ideas about zombie side uh, and zombies and superheroes in total, but I want to give it a go. I really want to give this a go. If I don't like it, fine, I'll sell it on. I'll probably you know, lose 10, 15 quid on selling it on. Not the end of the world, but at least I'm going to give it a go. So I set it up, and I played through the tutorial, which you really don't have to do because the rules are relatively straightforward. Uh, and I played through the tutorial, um, and yeah, I liked it. And uh, I thought, okay, fine. So maybe that is just kind of that new game honeymoon period. You know, you get a new game, you play it, you think, oh, yeah, that was fun. I, I want to do that again. So then I set up a full scenario after the scenario uh, after the tutorial, and I played that in the same night, and and I enjoyed it. And then I set up another scenario, and I played that, and I enjoyed it. I'm thinking, hold on a second, hold on a second. This this can't be. The type of game, it's, it's almost everything that I don't go for in board games sometimes, you know, these kind of lots of miniatures, lots of plastic from a company like Simon, uh, who has weird pricing policies, and we'll come on to that in a second when I talk about all the expansions, etc., uh, weird pricing policies uh, and what have you, and not necessarily a company that I uh, go out of my way to kind of uh, buy games from, but it started hitting kind of a, a real kind of um, a, a note with me that I was having a lot of fun playing this game. And yeah, I wasn't killing zombies, I was playing as zombies. But I was, you know, battling against hordes of humans and superheroes, etc. And that flip of narrative actually worked a little bit better for me. It actually made it feel less of a trope and more of something that I wanted to enjoy. To excuse me. Um, so, as I say, in the game, you've got these, uh, you, you can choose any of the characters that you want. Now, as a solo gamer, you're going to have to play with a minimum of four. Sounds like a lot, but in reality, uh, it's not a lot to manage. And each one comes with their own kind of uh, their own card here. And here we can see the card for uh, Captain Marvel. There we go, Captain Marvel there. And it tells you what they are. So, uh, you've got their health at the top, you've got their, their hunger along the side here, and I'll talk about hunger in a second. Then you've got their abilities and where they start on the board. So uh, as you gain XP, as you kill, 
uh, and devour, kill and devour kind of the the uh, the superheroes uh, and the troops, etc., and the hordes, not, not the bystanders, but the hordes that are attacking you, you're going to start gaining XP. And as the XP racks up on your board, and you'll see this down at the bottom here, which is this slider here, you've got this little black slider that you'll move up, and you can see it's coloured. There, it starts off blue, goes to yellow, goes to orange, then goes to red. And as that racks up, you can see on your card that you're going to get additional things to do. So the first thing, once you've got seven kills, uh, or seven experience points should I say is you're going to move into the yellow and that gives you an additional action you see you start off taking three actions then you move on from there and what are those what actions can you take well you can move uh, you can interact so you can pick objects up you can open doors uh, and you can do combat basically and that is in essence it now there is uh, in terms of combat there's two ways that you do combat which is slightly different to normal zombie side and uh, and certainly the hero mode which i'll talk about in a second um so your attacks are the attack that it gives you on there for example captain marvel here has got uh, mighty punches i roll two dice okay a minimum of two dice should i say uh and i have to roll a three or above on there to hit if you like and then the hits i get to apply in a target priority order to whoever's in my zone on the board and i say a minimum of two because what happens is as your hunger rises and this is this here of the board uh, on, uh, on this side here as this rises and that's going to increase every round and certain things are going to increase it throughout the game as well certain trait cards that you do and other other things that you do when you roll the dice and it comes up with a hunger symbol which is these gnashing teeth on there that's going to increase it as well so you get to roll your base dice plus you get to roll how many uh, hunger die uh, sorry how many hunger points you've got in there and the, uh, uh, as a number of dice as well so it can be if you're not at the top level of hunger that you've got three hunger um, that you're going to roll kind of two of your dice Katya Marvel would roll two of her dice plus three dice for the hunger as well so they would be rolling five die that would be good because that gives you obviously more chance of getting the threes that you want but on the flip side of that is if you roll hunger you have to increase your hunger score and what happens when the hunger goes to the top is you then become ravenous and at that point you can only perform two actions you can either move or you can devour now devour is a slightly different attack you're generally going to roll one dice you can do it at any point you're going to roll one dice plus how many, how many hunger dice you've got and try and score above four or more on your dice when you devour what that allows you to do is then drop your hunger back down to zero so you're not ravenous anymore you see if you go into another round when you're ravenous you lose a health point on there as well so controlling that hunger and that ravenous state and knowing when to devour becomes quite a, a key and critical part of the game a good little balancing act that you've got there in terms of uh you know you don't have to wait for it to get to four to devour because you may get to four right at the end and then it goes to the next round and you lose a health point there and that can be absolutely devastating in certain areas so you may want to devour sooner and certain characters on the board for example the uh the bystanders like i think that's mary jane yep we've got mary jane there you can only devour bystanders as well so you're going to have to devour at some point not only to control your hunger but also to devour the uh the bystanders as well so it's got that that nice little balancing uh, kind of mechanism going on there that you know it's almost a push your luck mechanism a little bit because as good as it is to have more hunger on there because you roll more dice is ultimately can ultimately be damaging because you're going to lose health points on there as well um so it operates slightly different to normal zombie side and and the hero mode of zombies uh, of marvel zombies in that respect in that this kind of push your luck element of hunger uh, has a kind of uh, uh, a, a reward and a <laughs> Uh, a punishment level to it if you allow it to go on too long so that is kind of the game in a nutshell you're going to go around the board you're going to try and complete various objectives and generally they are picking something up etc and then once you've done everything that you can do you then try to get to the exit um you're going to devour the bystanders and when you devour the bystanders generally you're going to get their cards so for example i've got agent coulson's card here on my uh, on my was it on wasp yeah it was on wasp this who uh, devoured agent coulson Coulson. and that gives you a power that you can use throughout the rest of the game unless you replace this card and this says once during your turn you may increase hunger to perform one free ranged attack and that becomes again important is getting the right kind of combination of not only these bystander cards but also trait cards here's another deviation from zombie side of course in normal zombie side you're going to pick up wet weapons and items there's nothing like that to pick up here because you know superheroes don't use weapons so you can uh, choose to use one of your actions to pick a trait card up for example this one says 
discard before attacking and increase hunger. Enemy, enemies suffer one toughness, uh, sorry, minus one toughness to a minimum of zero. Those are generally single use and your bystander cards are kind of continuous until you replace them on there so you get to use them again and again. So you've got this nice little balancing thing going on, which kind of adds to the fun. And it's flipping some of the mechanisms on its head. And all of a sudden, everything's starting to mesh and to gel together. Now, you're going to find out that in the early parts of the game, maybe until you get to like, you know, you've almost completed the objectives or you have completed the objectives and you're trying to get to the, uh, you're trying to get to the, uh, the exit zone. Is that where the game really starts to ramp up? You see, what you're going to do is you're going to pull some of these cards out uh, when you are doing the enemy phase uh, uh, or certain other actions on the board or certain areas on the board and you can see on the left hand side here it's got it tells you how many are coming out based on what color uh, the highest uh, experience of any of your players is at so getting that extra experience is really important because it allows you more actions it allows you more uh, more variety in what you can do of course it does but it also means that you're going to start increasing the level of what's on the board so it starts off fairly manageable you know you probably get to the end of the first round and whatever heroes were on there your zombies have managed to eat or devour etc but if i was to pull this out in round one this particular card for some troopers uh if i was to pull this out while everyone was still at blue it would only put two troopers on a spawn point if i was to pull it out while i was at orange or red it would pull six or eight out and you pull a couple of them in succession and suddenly your board is starting to team and swarm with these hordes coming at you uh, some of them will have activate on there some of them will tell you to pull a superhero out so what will happen is you've got your range of superhero cards here here we go these are these are the uh five i think uh six here we go six that come with the base game they're going to come out onto the board they have higher toughness so they're harder to kill and they also do special things some of them for example i think miss marvel can attack from three zones away so you've really got to time that right they can be you know a little bit easy to uh sometimes overcome but no nonetheless they become a bit of a menace on the board so you're balancing how high you want to go in terms of your experience and what you want to kill and you've got to kill and every time you kill you get experience uh into so you're balancing that against you know kind of thinking about how many of the bad guys or the good guys as it would be are going to come out on the board at the next spawn at the next uh, enemy phase or the next spawn point etc and you can get a really crowded board by the end of it you know i've had the i've had uh, nine i think nine segments out at one point on a, a very large map and that board was teeming with uh, everything everybody trying to kill the zombies on there so it's suddenly starting to hit this thing where I'm having fun with Marvel Zombies and like so much fun that I went out and I then bought Marvel Zombies X-Men Resistance, which of course gives you more missions and more things to do, but it also gives you the hero mode. And the hero mode flips it back to that more traditional. So you're going to play as the superheroes against zombies coming after you, basically. Uh, and you can choose to play as the heroes from the base, uh, as the zombies from the base game, as a hero, or the heroes from the base game as a hero, as well as uh, additional heroes in here and some zombie bad guys in here. So you've got this kind of interconnection between the various expansions where you can start adding stuff to it and mess around with different kind of factions, not factions, but different uh, setups in terms of what you think your ultimate build is going to be for a team to go out there and complete the missions but with that <laughs> comes the annoyance of the c1 model you see in marvel zombies you're going to get everything you need to do the need to play marvel zombies as zombie superheroes and look at this we've got the hulk mini here and here they are you know the minis are x and you can see a hulk there is all kind of zombified and bits of him falling off you can see through etc um, so you're going to get everything you need in there to play uh, a number of scenario scenarios with your uh, with Marvel zombies, Marvel zombie heroes going out there and trying to do what they want. But then the game also comes with a few other things as well. For example, it's got some of these cards to play as the heroes, uh, and it's got some scenarios in there to play on hero mode. But in the base game, it doesn't give you the, the instructions for the hero mode. Oh, no, 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 You've got to buy X-Men Resistance to get the instructions for the hero mode. Not only that, is it requires a whole new set of trait cards as well, because you need superhero trait cards. They come in X-Men Resistance. So to get the full experience of whether you play as zombies or whether you play as superheroes, you need to buy both boxes. Now... <sighs> 
could it be jury rigged in one way or another could you just kind of make do with some of the traits and some proxies in there and do proxies for the traits i suppose you could um but you only also get a limited number of hero scenarios in this game uh, in marvel zombies uh, obviously marvel x-men resistance you get more uh, hero scenarios but also a few zombie uh, scenarios as well now you know, who say Simon aren't fair because what they do in the X-Men resistance box is they give you everything to play heroes with but <laughs> they don't give you the hero rules they give you some tasters of what sorry they don't give you the zombie rules should I say they don't they give you some tasters of zombie stuff so they allow you to play some of the characters as zombies and give you some additional cards etc to use as zombies but the rules to play as a zombie game are obviously in this box as well now, it's, it's a smart move, obviously, from a business perspective from Simon. Um, but it's, it feels, oh, it feels disingenuous. Is that the right word? I don't know if that word I'm looking for here. It just feels like they're using the, um, the popularity of the Zombicide IP, of Marvel's IP, uh, and then using that to get people to double spend on boxes to get the most experience out of it and i think yes it's nice having some of the cards in there that allow you to play as hero mode and vice versa in x-men resistance that allow you to play as zombie mode but i just find it a little bit crass uh, and a little bit of a way to get people to double up what they're spending <clears throat> now i was happy to do it because i started falling in love with marvel zombies and I've played it pretty much non-stop since I got it last week. Um, so I was happy then to get X-Men Resistance as well and kind of you know, close the circle on what, I, what I've got here. Now, if you were a Kickstarter backer, of course, you could have then spent another, God knows, another four or five hundred pounds on all of the expansions on the giant Galactus uh, uh, bigature, if you like, to then get the full experience. You've got loads of characters and loads of uh, enemies and bad guys and scenarios and missions, etc. Um I, oh, yeah, as much as I love all that stuff, there's no way I'm going to spend four or five hundred pounds on just getting that to play more of the same game. You see, as much as I'm enjoying this game, it is the almost the very definition of a guilty pleasure for me. You know, I love big crunchy euros. I like games that I can sit down and plan my moves out and spend hours and hours playing them. The zombies hide game can take anything from ten minutes if you if you, the dice don't go your way at the beginning to about an hour basically uh, and, and and that's it maybe an hour and an hour and ten or something like that. Uh, playing solo this is so they're not deep and crunchy games in terms of strategy it's relatively short-lived you know you know that whatever you do is going to could be foiled or made by the dice that you roll on there and what happens in these spawn points so don't go into it thinking it's a strategy game go into it thinking it's an old style board game where you're rolling dice you're moving and you're combating and fighting and just trying to survive to the end of the scenario so yeah did I then want to spend another four or five hundred pounds on everything for Marvel Zombies? As much as I'd love to have everything, I don't think it's something that I'm going to do. I may well get one more expansion or two more expansions at kind of 40 quid a pop for this, but there's no way I'm going to go down that rabbit hole of kind of actively searching everything out and having a look for everything for it. Now, that is the Simon model, of course it is. Uh, you know, they make uh, their money by selling huge quantities of the games that they produce and by providing these kind of the, the additional ways for you to spend your money. It feels like a, a bit of a trap and certainly by splitting the hero mode and the zombie mode up into two boxes that you have to buy separately but teasing you in both of them is a bit of a trap. Everything else is purely kind of, um, uh, you know, it's at your will and at your disposal as to whether you want to go down that. Uh, I'm very happy with everything that I've got here. I'm happy that I spent the money on these uh, and I'm happy that the experience works for me. There's no way I would have bought this had I not really, really enjoyed the experience that I got with Marvel Zombies. But as I say, I do. I can't put my finger on why. Um, I'm having just a lot of fun with it. I enjoy setting it up. I enjoy the early stages and thinking about how, who best are going for the kill who do i want to have those powers most how can that best serve the rest of the team and then i enjoy seeing the pandemonium unfold on the board itself so i am enjoying all that kind of stuff but it's really you've got to you've got to think about do you want to spend 80 or 90 quid on a base game where you know it's going to be chucking dice 
playing as superheroes um, or uh, zombie superheroes, albeit, uh, and only getting kind of, I don't know, 60% of the game or 70% of the game because the other 30% is going to be in another box you've got to spend more money on. And then if you want to expand that experience, you're then going to spend more and more and more. And that is a problem for it you know at the price range that it's at i think you know you can get it in some shops they're charging like 110 115 pounds for it in some shops i picked it up for less than that um that's a lot of money to throw down and at those kind of levels it's going to appeal to uh zombie side fans marvel fans uh and the curious like me <laughs> and they got me they got me they got two boxes out of me by by kind of hooking me in on the first box and making me buy the second box it didn't make me but teasing me on that second box to actually uh you know say yeah i'm enjoying the experience enough i'm willing to spend that extra 80 90 quid whatever it cost me to get that second box and that's a rounded experience for me so out of the two modes then, uh, so you have the zombie mode and the hero mode, which do I prefer? Now I have played both, I played the hero mode three or four times and I played the zombie mode about eight or nine times now. And I think that shows you where I prefer. The hero mode is absolutely fine. It gives you all of the same stuff and you know you get to see the superheroes as they were intended and use them as they were intended. But I really enjoy playing as the zombie mode. As the zombie mode, I think that the kind of push your look element on this, uh, on the hunger, kind of spills it over for me. You get power in the superhero mode, and that builds. You can build that up, and then you can spend that power to do additional things. And it feels a little bit more traditional. Whereas the the push your look element of the of the hunger and whether you're going to go ravenous or not kind of makes a massive difference for me. So personally. I prefer the zombie mode. I will still play hero mode quite happily, but I do prefer the zombie mode. Your opinions may vary on whether you're kind of, you know, wanting to play zombies and eat people or not. So yeah, Marvel Zombies, probably going to end up being my most played game this year. And I know we're only in kind of April time, probably going to end up being my most played game this year. And it's a game that I... I recommend if you know what you're getting into, and that is an IP heavy, old school mechanism, dice chucking look fest to a certain degree, that has a certain amount of mitigation, that plays relatively quickly, that can be very, very swingy, that has zombies and it has superheroes in it, but I'm enjoying it so much, I'm having so much fun. The fact in just over a week I've played, what's that, 12 games, something like that? Uh, 12, in, in less than a week, uh, no, about a week, yeah, I've played about 12 games of this. Just shows that I'm really having a great time with it. Certainly, do check out other reviews and do think about if you like the zombie side mechanisms, because if you don't like the zombie side mechanisms, despite what they've done with the hunger uh, and the zombie mode, it's still zombie side. It's still a very basic game, and base and games have moved on. Zombie side streamlined the rules a little bit here, but it hasn't necessarily moved on. But what it does give me is just a real kind of quick setup, element of fun, put it away, and then set it up again or whatever uh, you know later on in the day and, and really roll it. So I'm loving uh, Marvel Zombies. So it's probably going to end up being my most played game of the year. Don't like the Simon model. Don't like the fact it goes to Kickstarter as well. And there's a whole thing on its own as to whether it needs to go to Kickstarter. Don't like the fact that they entice you and, and, and want you to get everything in there. Don't like the fact they split up the rules. And if you don't like, if you don't like dice chucking, old school gameplay, it's not for you. But for me, I'm really, really enjoying it. Far more than I, I thought I would. And, uh, and I don't know whether to be happy or sad about that. <laughs> I'm not a snob when it comes to games. Guilty pleasure. I'm absolutely adoring my time with Marvel Zombies. So if it looks like the kind of game for you, by all means, go and check out other reviews. See what the people say about it then, you know. But if it looks like the kind of game for you, then go and check out your, your, your local game store, your FLGS, and see if you can support them by buying it. So there we go. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey through Marvel Zombies from Simon Solo. Playing four characters. Zombie mode is the preferred mode for me. I'm absolutely adoring my time with this i think it's fantastic but there's lots of caveats there as well my name's mark this is not board gaming thank you very much for watching and one final thought if you can't find anyone else to play with then there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves until next time bye bye